Creason Studios just made my new favorite arpeggiata. In this video, I'm gonna show you why I think it's so cool. Okay, so I've got a session here that just basically has Reason with the arpeggiata in it and a drum track. Everything else that you're gonna hear is being generated by the arpeggiator. So the whole beat sounds like this. Like this. Yeah, it's doing this random thing and I haven't been able to figure out why yet when if I go back to the start and push play, sometimes it doesn't play like that and that, and sometimes it does. I, I don't know why it's doing that. If anyone, if anyone knows, that would be helpful. Here I've got my Reason Rack plugin with the arpeggiator in it. It's so simple and so powerful. I'm gonna talk you through what I've got going on in this session and then show you a few of the features that I think make it so great. I'm just using this divisible by seven patch, which I thought was cool because it's got 28 steps, so it's not quite four bars or, or whatever. So it creates this kind of cycling sound. I originally started with just this chord progression using this E flat chord. In one of my last videos, I mentioned how Chord Sequencer had this problem where if things were joined together, it didn't re-trigger them. Which becomes a problem if you specifically want to re-trigger them. In this other patch I made, in order to get it to re-trigger, I had to not have the chord touching this one. See that? Like it didn't it didn't re-trigger when it hit the E flat chord. What I wanted was this. In my other video, I think I was talking about how it was a problem with like note tool and being able to filter out the chords correctly and Reason acknowledged that it was a problem, said that there was probably a way to fix it and I, I think they said that maybe they'd get onto it, I don't know. Now it's a problem again for this application, so would be really great if there was an option to fix it. I think in the last video they mentioned it would be able to be fixed if this was just like one tick shorter as opposed to limiting it to one sixteenth. No, it's fine in this situation because I'm not using anything greater than a sixteenth note from this arpeggio lab, but still a little bit of a um, shortfall. I think. Anyways, that's my chord progression. Oh, I did that thing again. So, if you want in-depth tutorials on how to use it, check out Ryan's videos on the Reason channel because I'm not going to go in-depth on how to use it. I'm just going to show you some things that I think are cool. Here I've got a chord sequencer generating the chord progression. I messed around with recording stuff into the arrangement view in Ableton or playing chords in. Let's playing chord sequencer. One cool thing you can do is put this hold on.
that's a super cool feature for playing around with stuff and messing around with it. It's got the same things as it has in the new Note Tool one that was recently released. And I think it's a great addition. But we have chord sequencer triggering things in this case. Your basic shuffle, rate, and step settings. I really like that you can make it like 28. It's not linked to, well, one of the standard ones. And then you've got the anchor and the movement. What this does is it splits the chord into two parts. The root note, I think. Maybe also ones other than the root note. And what's happening with the rest of the notes in this movement section here. So if you turn this pattern knob, you can see it kind of generates some different patterns for the anchor i'm not 100 percent sure how it's determining what notes to use i don't really care it's cool I really like how in the dots up here, it kind of shows you what it's doing. Like if you look at, when I play it again, if you look here, you can see it plays it twice and then has the high note. And so we've got that represented here. We've got the two dark ones and then the secondary one. I think that is pretty sick. You can also change the note length or the velocity or the octave basic controls but it gives you a whole lot of variation and stuff you can do to it now the movement thing here is where it gets super super interesting because we're not just stuck with up or down or up and down or random as a lot of our arpeggi other arpeggiators are instead We've got these patterns that again, I think are represented really, really nicely here. You can change the density of what is in the pattern. Um, or we can shift the rhythm Again, a ton of control with some simple features. I think it's really cool. Change the note length, change the velocity, change the octave and humanize. Uh, I assume that's just kind of like a rhythmic kind of quantized thing as humanized knobs normally tend to be. Um, and then we have modifiers that we can make to either the octave or the rhythm. If we do this, let's say we double the movement only. Turn up the amount. Oh, turn it on. Now, I don't think that sounds any good for my little riff here, but I think that's dope. And I assume this new seed button kind of changes how it bases this adjustment 
on. I also like that it shows you this kind of drip animation here when it's playing. So that's already pretty cool. We've got a ton of different ways to create some incredibly cool patterns. And like, I think arpeggiators are great for coming up with ideas, interesting melodies, maybe something I want to play on the guitar later on. It doesn't have to just be in here, but I, arpeggiators are cool anyway. What I started with was this arpeggio lab controlling Europa, which um, sounded like that. But then what I did was use these gates out and I took the anchor notes only and I sent them to this MIDI out, which I then had controlling this MIDI Moog, which was doing that. So we add those together. On that A flat, the mini Moog is not playing that low, apparently. So it's only happening on the E flat, but whatever. Then we have the movement going to this polytone, which sounds like this. So with the other two. Again, it's just the movement going to the polytone. That means the stuff that is generated by the orange part here is going to the polytone. Then I also have all of them going to this algorithm. So with all of the others. So yeah, all of that is being controlled by this one arpeggio lab, which I think is super cool. I love the fact that you can split these different parts out across instruments. The other really cool thing is you can use LFOs to control pretty much any parameter here for the anchor and the movement, which can give you some really, really cool automation. Let's say I wanted to control the note length of the anchor. I can take my CV from this pulsar that I have here. We'll solo the Moog because that's just playing the anchor. So that's what it's doing to it. That's how it's changing it. Let's listen to it in context now. Honestly, why? Um, or you can change the pattern, I guess. I don't know. We'll see that mess around with this part here now. Now, I, um, I have not spent really any time actually trying to be artistic with um, this CV control, as you can probably see. So when I'm messing around with it right now, it just sounds like an absolute mess. But I love the possibilities here. Reason is starting to get a, a really, really good selection of players, I think. I was super stoked with Random Tool and Note Tool. I think they were fantastic utility players. This arpeggio lab, oh, I think this might be my new favorite player, mainly because I really like arpeggiators. I feel like it's super simple, super intuitive to use, but also gives you 
an incredible amount of customization options. And I love the fact that you can split these different parts and play with CV routing to change parameters. This is great. I don't really have any criticisms of it. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll think of something at some point, but right now I'm really enjoying using what they've given us here. Most of my criticisms just stem from the fact that chord sequencer is still annoying with how it connects things and the limitations of the Reason Rack plugin in general. You wouldn't have this problem using it inside Reason Standalone, but it's pretty annoying only being able to go out via one MIDI device. That means if I wanna have anything being controlled by this Apeggio Lab, it has to be coming from that one MIDI device. So right now, I couldn't have another synth that's not inside Reason playing the movement part of it because I've only got the anchor part of it going to my MIDI device, which is going to the MIDI Moog. So, you know, that's, that's still a little bit of an annoying limitation of the Reason Rack plugin, but that's nothing to do with Arpeggio Lab. I have seen some people commenting online about the fact that it's really expensive if you don't have Reason Plus, and I tend to agree. It's $69 if you buy it by itself. That's a huge amount, I think. Oh, well, is it? I don't know. You get people making the arguments about how other plugins cost X amount of money and stuff. And we can really see here that Reason Studios wants us to be on Reason Plus. If you have Reason Plus, which, you know, I don't mind being on the subscription model. And I think Reason Plus is, is like a fine amount to pay, probably. I can get, I get why people don't like it, but if you're on Reason Plus, then you have an excellent new tool with Arpeggio Lab here. I think it's super awesome. If you're not on Reason Plus and they're expecting you to buy all of these new players individually, I think it can get quite expensive. I don't know if I'd buy it if I didn't have Reason Plus. To be honest, I probably wouldn't use Reason if I didn't have Reason Plus. So that's Arpeggio Lab, Reason's new player. It's great. I love it. I think this is the best one I've put out. Oh, in a long time, I think. I really like Note Tool. I really like Random Tool, but they're more utilities. This is more creative. Flip, I don't know. They've they've actually been on on their game this year. I think I think Arpeggio Lab is my new favorite. But um, I'm very very happy with the state of players in Reason right now. Yeah, I'm gonna put Ryan's videos from the Reason channel in the description. So if you haven't watched those, definitely watch them. He goes through a whole lot of really cool examples of what you can do with Arpeggio Lab. And yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say about it. I will see you guys next time I make a video, which hopefully won't be as long as this one was. <laughs> I'll see you later.